Hello everyone and welcome back to Poetry Surprises. Well, today I want to talk to you about the haiku. Well, the haiku is a very, very short poetic form, as you've probably just gathered. And that does present some problems when doing a five or ten minute film. Uh, essentially, you can get hundreds of them in. Now, each short haiku is meant to provide a moment's insight, a moment's revelation into the relationship between the individual and the world around them. Now, that's a lot of revelations in a very short space of time if you're doing a poetry reading. And it can lead to problems when you're in front of the public and you're a haiku writer. I remember a time when I was in uh, Walthamstow at a poetry reading in the public library there and a very serious young man got up and stood in front of the audience and he decided he had to explain Heisenberg's indeterminacy principle and he related that to some Einsteinian physics and he went on about particle interactions in the plasma of the sun. And after 15 minutes, he proudly announced that he would now read his poem and it was a haiku. It passed very quickly. Anyway, the haiku is an imported form. It comes from uh, Japan and it was created in the 17th century. Uh, the customary way of thinking about it is that it's five syllables, seven syllables and five syllables and often deals in very concrete imagery uh, relating to nature and, as I said before, provides some kind of revelatory moment. The great Japanese haiku writers, Matsuo Basho uh, and Kobayashi Isa, wrote incredibly beautiful uh, haiku poems. And I just want to show you one of Issa's poems here. The form caught on in the West because it's uh, so succinct, it's rewarding, and also it appeals to the, 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 the more mystical element of uh, the human spirit, uh, nature harmony, uh, animism, uh, and uh, mood and relaxation, uh, even therapies today. So you can see why it's, it's become popular, um, although I think it's very difficult to really say that we actually know what the haiku is about because when you're dealing with Japanese you're dealing with a language which comes on a completely different branch of the tree of the of the human language system and the uh, the the whole idea of Japanese script being uh, much more image oriented and and also much more capable of multi-layered meaning. Uh, in, in Japanese, one sound can mean many, many different things. It makes our concept of the pun look primitive. So there tends to be a greater exactitude, perhaps, in, the, in, in Western language. So when actually translating the concept of the haiku, uh, you're actually bending it and adapting it to a different culture. So therefore, I think it's probably fair to call things Western haiku. In the West, there have been haiku societies, haiku clubs, haiku swaps and dinner parties, uh, all kinds of haiku paraphernalia and fun. And I think that's, that's, that's a wonderful thing. Uh, uh, there is a book by a friend of mine who uh, uh, has written a book called How to Write a Haiku. 
and that's by David Lindley. So do look up this book if uh, you want to uh, learn more about the haiku itself. But of course, you can also go onto Wikipedia and various other places to find out more. Uh, the great fun of the haiku is that you can read them very readily and easily in, in, in places and get surprised by them. Um, so here's another one. And here's one that I wrote. And that's it for now. So, see you again soon, maybe with something a bit longer. Bye for now.